Module 1 to 3 covered the ways in which different groups of workers are exposed to air pollution at work and the possible impacts this can have on their health and earning potential and how policy can help to address this. The last module will delve into green economy and green jobs. It will discuss how a just transition to green economy can help address issues relating to occupational air pollution and ensure that there will not be any unintended consequences. Let's start with the definition of green economy and green jobs. The green economy is focused on achieving environmentally sustainable and socially inclusive growth, helping to achieve climate goals alongside sustainable development goals. Green jobs are, therefore, jobs that contribute to achieving a green economy. Here is a definition of green jobs provided by ILO. Green jobs should provide better job quality and have better outcomes for an environment, such as use fewer scarce resources and contribute less to environmental degradation. It is estimated that, in general, 55 million jobs will disappear in mining and manufacturing sectors, while 45 million jobs will be created in service and waste management sectors by 2030. The transition to a green economy is driven by 1. Earth's finite resources and resource scarcity 2. Observing the harmful impacts of non-renewable resources on people and planet 3. Demand from environmentally aware consumers and 4. Global environmental agreements and pressure from the local communities for governments to adopt sustainable practices. While green jobs should be better quality that is safer for workers, providing better conditions and better pay, environmental concerns are the driving force between the green economy. The green economy is seen as a key way to achieve climate change mitigation goals, but it requires investments in new technologies and new skills. It creates the risk of leaving certain groups of workers behind, especially informal workers, whose jobs may be displaced by new systems and technologies, such as in waste management. If green jobs are also supposed to be better and safer, this also places an increased burden on employers who may decide to employ fewer people with socio-economic consequences for those who are left unemployed. Thus, the transition towards a green economy needs to ensure socio-economic impacts are front and center. Here is an example of green jobs which has a specific inclusion focus. This model creates jobs for former prisoners who struggle to find jobs. Solar panels help to achieve emissions reductions. Ex-prisoners have secure employment and contribute to cleaner ambient air. However, ensuring inclusive green jobs is also about ensuring people who already have jobs can transition to jobs that contribute to climate mitigation and do not create pollution. This needs to happen on a large scale. This section will explain how a transition to green economy helps address issues relating to occupational air pollution, including some examples of green transitions in the transportation and agricultural sector. By its nature, a green transition should result in cleaner air and less air pollution. Key sectors for the transition including mining, energy, industry, and transport, which all are significant contributors to emissions. 
Looking at the transportation sector, for transit drivers currently operating highly polluting vehicles such as diesel buses, often with no air conditioners, jeepneys or tuk-tuks, where they are exposed to fumes, a shift to EVs will limit their exposure and benefit air quality more widely. A wider societal shift to public transport, walking and cycling will also benefit air quality and, therefore, the fumes that transport workers are exposed to, as well as other outdoor workers like street sweepers or vendors. Another sector is the agricultural sector. Agricultural workers can be exposed to high levels of air pollution when agricultural burning is common practice. Most agricultural workers are informal. Green jobs in agriculture would mean Firstly, changing practices away from burning, such as composting waste products, using biodigesters to generate energy. It also encourages more environmentally friendly farming practices with fewer pesticides and herbicides. The issue we should consider is that as burning is used as a convenient, low-cost method, employing technology could cause job losses. The last section will focus on some challenges for a just transition and how we can ensure no unintended consequences. There are some challenges to achieve a just and green transition. First of all, top-down edicts or regulations hit workers hardest. For instance, the Philippine government issued closure and suspension orders for more than 20 mining companies due to non-compliance with environmental policies and nearing end-of-life mines. This brought to the fore not only mining issues, but also the vulnerability of workers, communities, government sectors, and enterprises. Secondly, Blanket rules come with negative consequences. For example, rules on age of vehicles can hit those who rely on those vehicles for their income. For example, taxi drivers or delivery drivers. It is also need to highlight the necessity for comprehensive and coherent policies and measures to address the multifaceted challenges and to pursue an environmentally sustainable growth while ensuring a just transition for those affected. Through the ILO, consultations were organized with national and local governments, trade unions, employers, and other stakeholders, which resulted in a nine-point policy framework to transition the mining sector. Thirdly, structural drivers of inequality, such as unequal access to education, financial literacy, and unequal access to loans need to be addressed. Lastly, we should also think about how to encourage a green transition in the informal sector. As mentioned in the previous slide, the structural causes of inequality that prevent people accessing decent jobs need to be addressed. Inequalities stem from birth, such as access to education, nutrition, skills and training, social welfare, and knowledge about working rights. Informal and formal workers should have the same rights in terms of access to health care, social security, and unemployment benefits. In this regard, civil society, such as labor unions, can play a role in educating and empowering both formal and informal workers. It is also necessary to allow an access to incentives and financial structures, such as the subsidies for public transportation. For instance, the competition exists in South African cities between the informal transport sector 
characterized by the taxi industry, and city efforts to expand public transport infrastructure by expanding bus networks in particular. Given the popularity of the informal taxi sector in South African cities, it clearly has an important role to play in facilitating affordable and equitable access to transport within the context of just transition. Experts have suggested that the taxi industry should be more formally incorporated into the public transport sector and should receive subsidy support specifically targeted at reducing costs for commuters who use taxis. There are encouraging signs that this process is underway, with the Competition Commission recently recommending a subsidy for the taxi industry. Here are some key messages that you've learned from this module. Thank you for attending this module.